Uh, Ken, uh, one of the studies that has been done with GPLC, a particular form of carnitine uh, uh, called glycine propionyl L-carnitine, was conducted by uh, a researcher uh, by the name of uh, Rick Richard Bloomer, uh, I believe at the University of Tennessee. Memphis, Memphis, University of Memphis. Memphis. Yes. Can you tell us about that one? Yes, a we, bit? Have a, we have a, a number of interventions ongoing, and uh, this goes back several years. Uh, but that some of the findings that uh, we found regarding glycocarn is a uh, is a retention of nitric oxide in uh, human plasma. We've also done this is here again. This has all been done on humans, not on mice or on uh, pumpkins or anything, but done on humans. And that essentially, we found that nitric oxide was retained favorably retained at very high levels, and that from a scientist standpoint. Uh, to have this level of nitric oxide retained is very significant as far as, as contributing positively towards blood flow uh, into the muscle. And so this has a number of ramifications and uh, desirable uh, endpoints. Certainly, certainly it increases the amount of, uh, of uh, oxygen uh, to the cell. And from a standpoint of uh, muscular, strenuous, strenuous muscular activity, it shortens the interval potentially for the recovery of the muscle after exercise. And so this is one finding. We also noticed that the initial study was done on a, uh, uh, on a population of healthy uh, young adults and that uh, it's difficult to find changes you know, in occurring in these people, but essentially uh, they entered into an eight-week uh, program of exercise and, and dietary supplementation with glycocarn. Uh, we did find that some of, the, some of the aspects normally associated with an exercise program went very well and that the, uh, blood the blood lipids started to change more favorably, that HDL went up. We also saw that triglycerides were decreased in, the, in that skin fold, uh, which is a determination of not so much body weight, which can be very misleading, you know, uh, but, but actually how much fat is on the body. So skin fold... Um, um, and body composition uh, made, made positive or, or, or desirable changes. Also, we noticed that some of the end products of metabolism were decreased with glycocarn supplementation at fairly, uh, uh, fairly substantial levels. And so we mentioned, we, we measured some of the peroxidases and some of the uh, uh, isoprostanes and, and, and types of um, MDA, which are, these are end products of, or of metabolism that are unfavorable. They, they, they are the so-called random oxygen species, kind of like the wild and woolly uh, radicals that cause damage to the cell that we were talking about. These are diminished you know, in, uh, with, with glycocarn supplementation. So there's a lot of favorable stuff, and we found no bad, bad effects. There's no side effects. There was no ill effects, I mean, at all from the from the product, taken at fairly high levels of three, three and a half grams a day. And so the product is uh, essentially safe, well tolerated, and offers uh, very good support, you know, for uh, the type of things that, that uh, we're interested in here today. Let's uh, take another uh, look at uh, the nitric oxide. You mentioned that earlier and how it helps to relax blood vessels. And so how can this be important for people? Uh, the difference between having you know, your, your blood vessels relax so that blood can flow freely uh, and the opposite of that is, is uh, constricted blood vessels and, and the problems that that might present. Well, we're talking about, we're talking about oxygen demand and, and that muscles, you know, we're, when we're talking about uh, you know, a swimmer or a runner that's doing, performing an aerobic exercise that gets to that point where fatigue starts to you know, in other words, you, you, some, some runners say, you know, I've got my, my lungs are okay, but my legs gave out, or, or vice versa. I mean, essentially, essentially there are end products of, of, muscle, of muscle use that have to be removed. These are waste products, and they're, they're in the form of lactic acid derivatives that accumulate and cause cramping or are waste products that have to be removed. By increasing the amount of blood flow to the muscles during uh, periods such as this, what you're doing is, is you're speeding up not only the recovery of the muscle uh, 
on a longer term basis, but on a shorter term basis too, by removing some of these waste products so that you can continue, you know, you continue your activity, whatever that may be. And here again, it's important that the activity may be running a 10K race, or it could be running for a train or, a, or an airplane. You know, I mean, you, it's, it's a matter of what you consider to be your, your chief areas of, uh, of, uh, of, of exercise venue. Thank you, Ken.